In today's video, I'm gonna give you seven tips to beat chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue is something that a lot of people in today's society are suffering from. So if you're one of these people, meaning that for most days, there's a few hours sometime in the afternoon where you feel heavy, you feel sleepy, you feel tired, you feel like you wanna just take a nap and you're not feeling good and you can't also be productive, then you might be suffering from chronic fatigue. A lot of people accept this as normal and this is not something that is easily diagnosed it's not like, oh, you're blind or you can see. It's not black and white. Chronic fatigue comes in many different shades of gray. The beautiful thing about these seven tips that I'm about to share with you is that you can implement one of them or you can implement a few of them or all of them, but they're guaranteed to give you more energy and vitality for your waking hours of the day. And all seven of these are things that have really helped my life and my energy levels. So I'm sure it can help you as well. Tip number one is this, implement intermittent fasting in your life. This is really important because your body is a machine and and the machine requires energy to run. If you are thinking, if you are writing, if you are walking, jogging, exercising, or if you're digesting, all these life processes take up energy. So the more energy your body is using to digest food, the less energy you have to think and to move and to do other non-digestive life processes. If you are one of these people who, who's eating something, you know, from the moment you wake up till the moment you go to bed, you know, eating three, four, or five meals per day and snacking in between, basically you're never giving your digestive organs a rest. So it's always digesting. So if you implement intermittent fasting in your life, you're basically going to be creating a regular period of time when your body is not needing fuel or energy to digest food because the digestion of our food takes up a lot of energy. First, you got to break down the things that you put in your mouth into smaller pieces that can be absorbed and the second part, you got to absorb it and you know later on after absorbing it, you got to remove the waste products. So it's a very complicated process that takes a lot of energy. So implement intermittent fasting. It's very, very simple. Just make sure that the first meal of your day is further away from you know your waking hour and your last meal of the day is further away from your bedtime. So a good rule of thumb to start with intermittent fasting would be the 16, eight hour feeding window. So you fast for 16 hours and this 16 hours includes the times when you are asleep and you feed for eight hours per day. So you could try something like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. you're eating and anything after 6 p.m. and anything before 10 a.m., you're not consuming any calorie. You are allowed to drink water, of course, and for some people, coffee or tea, as long as it's unsweetened, would also help them manage these hunger symptoms so they can go through this intermittent fasting protocol. So that's something I strongly recommend. Tip number two is this, minimize or even eliminate the consumption of meat and dairy products. Meat and dairy products take a lot more time and energy for your body to break down and absorb compared to food stuff like fruits and vegetables. Beef, pork, they take more than a day for your body to completely digest. Whereas fruits take an hour or so, vegetables take a few hours. It's the same concept as intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, you try to make sure you're not eating. So in those times, you know, you have more energy for non-digestive purposes. It's the same thing with point number two. If you are consuming food that is easy for your body, Body to break down and absorb aka digest then you have more energy for other non-food or non-eating related activities to help you beat chronic fatigue if you don't believe me you can research it yourself what are the digestion times for beef for pork for chicken for seafood for eggs for milk and cheese and what is it for raw vegetables cooked vegetables and fruits and you can decide for yourself if what I'm saying makes sense tip number three is this move and sweat every day notice that I did not say go to the gym and do a heavy workout every day. There is actually no studies that show that heavy lifting or vigorous exercise every day increases lifespan. A lot of the studies done in the blue zones, which are areas in the world where people live really long and they also have a tendency to live a long life without having these chronic diseases that plague societies in America. These places, the people, they don't go to gyms, but every day they make sure that they move, they are guarded gardening, they're walking, they are hiking in nature, they are stretching, they're doing yoga. So every day, move and sweat. There's no excuse for this. You don't need a gym. You don't even need resistance bands. There's a lot of programs
programs you know on YouTube where you could download and you can follow and do a full body workout and all you need is your body weight yoga is a good practice Tai Chi is another good practice and there's a lot of calisthenics exercise you know push-ups planks dips things you can do to also gain strength and mobility and flexibility and also get your cardio and sweat on now tip number four is this sleep quantity and quality let's talk about quantity first if you are one of these people who wake up regularly with an alarm clock that's not a good sign because your body is telling you that you need more sleep but you're forcefully artificially waking it up so if you're using an alarm clock make sure that you go to bed earlier so that you don't need an alarm clock and when it comes to quality of sleep this is something Thing that a lot of people don't realize how important it is not every minute of sleep is equal try to make sure that two hours before going to bed you're not using any electronic devices because the artificial light that you get from your laptop from your smartphone plus the emotional and mental stimulus that social media or TV gives you it doesn't really relax your brain or your mind to be able to quickly and efficiently switch to the rejuvenation mode which we desperately need for optimal recovery when we sleep. So if you're one of these people who you know fall asleep with the TV on, that's not really a good practice if you want to optimize the quality of your sleep. And when it comes to quality of your sleep, you want to make sure that you minimize the disturbances that you get while you're asleep. So for me, I personally use silicone earplugs and if I'm in a room where it's noisy, I also produce a white noise machine sound from my phone so that it drowns out the random external noise such as the bus or dogs barking or someplace or the chicken you know they make that noise in the morning and if you have a partner a boyfriend girlfriend a husband or wife and you sleep in the same bed you may want to consider sleeping in different beds because there's a lot of studies that show that couples who sleep together they actually have lower quality and quantity of sleep so other aspects of your life may improve but when it comes to sleep specifically Specifically, you may be better off sleeping on your own bed. Tip number five is this, escape your mind every day. Chronic fatigue is basically a symptom or an overall feeling that you get because you don't have enough energy. And a lot of the things we do, thinking, digesting, worrying, all these take up energy and now you have less energy for the things that you do want to do. So worrying is something that a lot of us do subconsciously. We are filled with anxiety, we worry about the past, we worry about the future, we worry about missing out on things, social media, the news, hearing our friends talk about their lives, what they want, and we're filled with a lot of anxiety. Our mind is constantly always searching for problems. So it doesn't matter if you're in the beach, you know, on a holiday, you are primed still to be looking for problems. So essentially, the mind is always worrying. And Every day, I strongly recommend that you find an activity in which you can escape your mind. For me, it's working out. While I'm lifting weights, I cannot think about anything else. I'm in a state of flow where the doing of that activity is all that matters. It's all I'm focusing on. For some people, it is walking in nature. For others, it's reading a book. Now, when it comes to escaping your mind every day, there are healthy and productive ways to do that and there are unhealthy ways. So when you're binge watching Netflix or watching porn or smoking cigarettes or getting drunk, getting high, these are some examples of escaping your mind but they may not necessarily be healthy for you in the long run if you factor in all the other aspects of life. Find something to escape your mind daily and hopefully that something is also beneficial for other aspects of your life and not just a relief from worrying. And once you implement this activity where you are escaping your mind every day, you would be worrying less. And if you're worrying less, you would have more energy for your other stuff, thereby beating chronic fatigue. Now, the sixth tip that I'm about to give you is specifically just for men. So if you have a brother, partner, or a friend who you know is suffering from this, this tip might be very helpful. It has certainly been very helpful for me limit the amount of ejaculations you do because the act of creating that fluid and expelling it it takes up a lot of energy and precious nutrients from your body this is not something that is very popular it's very controversial I know and if you search Google probably will not get a lot of 
medically backed authorities agreeing with what it is I'm saying. But there has actually been studies where rabbits who have a lot of sex and rabbits, the male ones, who do not have sex, which ones do you think lived longer? And this makes sense also from a nutritional point of view because the semen, the thing that we expel as men when we ejaculate, this is very rich in precious minerals and nutrients. So if you are not eating a very healthy diet, you're also not exercising, but you're addicted to pornography or you're jerking off every day or you are obsessively, you know, engaging in superficial casual sex every day, then you are wasting a lot of these nutrients and energy and you're not building up your body to be able to sustain this. Some people say that ejaculating is actually the equivalent of you running something like a half marathon. Look, I'm not against sex, but I wanna tell the men out there that there's a way to be having sex without needing or wanting to ejaculate every single time. And also, I'm not against ejaculating during sex. All I'm saying is that you have to be mindful that when you ejaculate, you are losing energy and nutrients. And if you keep your body in great shape, you know, you eat healthy, you sleep well, you recover, and you're moving, you're exercising, then yes, you will obviously not face or experience as much harmful effects from ejaculating than someone who, like I said, is overweight, doesn't eat properly, doesn't sleep properly, chronically stressed. That person is jerking off and or losing semen every day, he will face a lot more harmful effects. The seventh tip, the last tip is this, limit or stop the consumption of caffeine, alcohol, and tobacco. There's a lot of people who are chronically tired, they experience chronic fatigue, but every morning they need coffee to jumpstart their day, and at night they need to get high or they take sleeping pills to wind down. This is very bad in the long run because you are artificially boosting your energy level in the morning and then artificially lowering it at night on a daily basis so this wreaks havoc on your natural system so it may take a few weeks for your body to actually get used to not drinking your coffee but in the long run giving up coffee would give you more energy that's sustained throughout the day I know this because I've done this I used to be addicted to coffee and alcohol is the next thing I used to be addicted to alcohol as well every time I'm having fun I'm always drinking alcohol I cannot imagine a good time without alcohol but alcohol is not good for you in every single way there are some compounds in some alcoholic substances like maybe red wine that are antioxidants that have benefits but if you consume a lot of alcohol excessively or you get drunk then this is a thing that would really help you beat chronic fatigue get rid of alcohol and tobacco smoking cigarettes I used to smoke cigarettes a lot and I love smoking cigarettes and you know when I'm feeling lethargic not to mention anxious or bored or whatever other feeling even happy I want to smoke a cigarette to give me even more energy it's kind of like adrenaline you get like a boost of energy especially if you're feeling too lazy you don't want to talk to people and you're in a situation where there's people smoking a cigarette gives me that jolt of energy in some ways people think that smoking a cigarette helps overcome that feeling of sluggishness and tiredness that they do have and they may be right for five minutes ten minutes the uptick of energy that we get from smoking a cigarette seems like it's beating chronic fatigue but the truth is that we more than pay for this so whatever boost of energy we got, we pay for it for the times when it's not five minutes after a cigarette. So overall, cigarettes actually steal energy from us. So if you wanna beat chronic fatigue, you wanna get more energy, stop smoking cigarettes. So hopefully these seven tips make sense. These seven things are not things that I just Googled off the internet. These are things that have greatly benefited me because I used to suffer from chronic fatigue. I was always tired, especially in the afternoon, and I couldn't be happy or be productive. So if I have a young younger brother or younger sister or a nephew or a niece who's suffering from chronic fatigue, these are the seven things that I would beg him or her to try. Any of these or some of these or all of these are almost guaranteed to give you more energy and vitality during the waking hours of your day. So if you found these steps helpful and you want to try some of them, please comment what you're going to try and at the same time like it and you know if you know some people that can benefit, please share it and don't forget to subscribe because I really want to reach as many people as I can and when you do these things it really helps my video the algorithm ranks it better so if you do these things or not or if you found it helpful or not I still want to thank you for watching this video